I'm Manny, I'm a Learning and Development Manager. I'm a qualified personal trainer, boxing coach and sports nutritionist. Um, I'm also your client for my strength training. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Alex, I'm a qualified personal trainer. Um, I am an online coach, I'm a bodybuilder, football player, and I am your 6.45 a.m. How? Torture. Torture. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think men overcompensate for their fear of failure because they're men? Yes, <laughs> I'd say so. I think everyone knows that. I guess if you look back hundreds and thousands of years ago, maybe not hundreds of thousands, hundreds I'm not of years old, <laughs> <laughs> like hundreds of years ago, when it was like the whole caveman kind of thing, it was like men was like the hunter gatherer, almost do everything. I feel like that mindset, even though we're thousands of years ahead, is still very very much present so they feel like they need to be doing everything yeah. for the majority of people I feel like they need to feel almost on top a lot of the time so when you stoop below that top feeling that you want to have as much as you don't want to talk about it it's very much there but you don't want people to know I guess exactly that you've failed in a way because yeah. you always want to be like come across as like the tough guy yeah. in a way um, so it's if you fail, you don't want to tell people, but then it's like knowing in the back that you have failed. So it's wanting to like work on that, I guess. So imagine, I guess, walking into a gym, working your set, and you're standing next to a girl lifting way heavier than yeah, you. Exactly. That's probably what it's, it's, it's definitely, it's that kind of, then you're looking straight ahead at the, at the mirror and you're kind of like, what's going on here? <laughs> but um, definitely, it could also be a bit of motivation too, because it's always that like, men want to be stronger it's yeah. how we're kind of biomechanics so you want to be stronger so then you can almost like you're motivated to push that a little bit more if yeah. you know that there's other people that aren't as strong as you i'm not sure if it'll be the same for females if you do see females that are stronger than you too but mm -hmm. from a male perspective i feel like you always want to be stronger than the person next to you yeah. i guess that's just being competitive as well right i you think know, that, if yeah. we don't put gender in the perspective it's yeah. if you see people around you doing way better yeah. than you then yeah. you want to hurry up yeah and i know for myself in. i have a very competitive nature like recently played friendly football games i don't believe in friendly <laughs> football games <laughs> so if you see someone that's doing well you always want to at least get to where they're at yeah but i think it's important to not be jealous of the mm. kind of strength that someone might be at the money they're making or something but instead be motivated motivated by that to reach those levels as well yeah chances are if they are stronger than you making more money than you as you catch up to them you're probably going to be that a little bit further ahead already but it's that constant motivation mm. but i think that's what we need to keep pushing yeah as much as you fail on the way at least you'll still have something there to keep you motivated yeah it's i guess it's really the ability to use that as a drive as intrinsic yep. motivation right any fear any pressure there'll always be society views that's exactly yeah maybe good or bad yeah um but it's what we do with those views exactly yeah. taking it into your own hands instead of just letting it crumble you yeah like using that as motivation to keep pushing and overcome those failures yeah so do you think you don't have to work as hard then so as a female i always feel like i have to work just a little bit harder you know at work mm -hmm. the gym training it's almost an immediate because i'm female i'm shorter and whatever it is mm -hmm. that people's expectations of my performance will already be lower than their expectation mm -hmm. for your performance mm -hmm. so i feel like i always have to do a little bit more do you feel like you don't have to work as hard because you're a male i wouldn't say i've had an experience where i've felt like that yeah but then i can kind of see how that is portrayed th throughout society yeah but personally myself I don't think I've been in that position where it's kind of like come easy to mm -hmm. get anything um I guess an experience would be if you're put up against side of a female in the same position what kind of was the difference in someone getting a role getting a job doing yeah. anything getting but biceps, <laughs> getting biceps. <laughs> I mean I'd always like to have the biggest biceps but can't all be one is that's just ego that's, that's just, just ego yeah. yeah I'm sure they're a lot smaller than they are <laughs> So you're a personal trainer, um, how often do you find that you have a fear of failure for your customer because of their fear of failure itself, so they almost have their confidence as well? 
all the time. Um, I almost think their belief and their mindset of whether they're going to fail will just immediately show. Yep. Um, and often you see a client being so close to completing a drill mm-hmm. or a set of exercise or reps or weights. And the fear of even working hard or mm-hmm. not being able to do it will stop them. But they're literally two reps away. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. What about you? I think I had the same with a few clients that you'd say, you know, the ideal rep range people talk about is like that 10 to 15, 10 to 12. You'll go up to eight reps or something and they do it really easy. As soon as it starts to hurt, it starts to burn, it's kind of like drop the weight, oh, I'm finished. Yeah. But it's like you only have two more to go. Imagine, I always talk about, imagine those two reps over four sets in the exercise, six exercises over a whole year. It's like you can, thousands yeah. of extra reps that you could have done if you had just stuck through that little bit. Yeah. And I think, um, like you mentioned, you can tell straight away if their, their sense of failure is quite high. I think from that first like consultation that you have with a yeah. client, you can kind of already tell. But as soon as they start to see some results and feel better, you kind of succeed and overcome that, that fear of failure. How do you help them overcome that? I think that motivation outside of the gym, because mm-hmm. obviously you have a client say like come three times a week for an hour session, that's only three hours out of over a hundred and something hours in the week. Yeah. So if they're not doing anything outside of those three hours, there's not like nothing's going to change mm. so it's that motivation on the outside to then kind of keep pushing them to achieve their goals but a lot of it is in the moment eh? it's exactly. that last set yeah it's yeah. that last set but then they know that once they finish that they can go home yeah. but then it's like as long that's as how you that. motivate me when i train yeah. with you you'll tell me that i get to go exactly. home after this <laughs> yeah, so, yes exactly. let's go <laughs> it's that kind of thing so they they're always like for yourself for uh, your favorite exercise lunges if it comes to those last few them. exercises and it's that last set, it's like motivating you to say, you're almost done. And I'll never have to do it again in my life. Until next week. Yeah. <laughs> if you're finished for the session so you can just, you can stop there. Yeah. yeah. I think with, with my clients, um, a lot of the time I work with fighters and the motivation behind that is so different. Yeah. Um, and I find the most effective way is linking it to their personal experience so with a mm-hmm. lot of fighters we know quite a lot about them yeah. and I always try to think that mind muscle that you use to push through something impossible you know you yeah. could fail it could go wrong yeah. it's the same mind muscle they use for day-to-day challenges exactly. outside of yeah. exercising yeah so and that yeah you find it's that like intrinsic motivation so yeah. it has to be something in the background motivating them to do that like people don't just come to the gym for no reason or some some people do but yeah. then the way to keep them going and achieving their goals mm-hmm. there has to be a background so for example yourself fighting you know that in 10 weeks there's a fight so it's easy to keep that motivation yeah whereas if it's just i should should General go to the gym <laughs> yeah if it's i <laughs> yeah. should go to the gym because everyone goes to the gym it's hard to keep going to the gym yeah. and i think that's where that fear of failure keeps coming in. So bodybuilding show, they competed in August last year. Um, I think the biggest fear was going into that, knowing that there's going to be people on stage that are a lot bigger than you, have been training for a lot longer, um, and have also done more competitions than you. Mm -hmm. Something that I heard from a lot of people was you get better as you do more shows. Obviously your first show is going to be not as good as your second show as you start to get more confident in it. So it was knowing that even though I was in a novice division, so people um, that haven't won a show before, that there could be people that, even though they haven't won a show before, they could have done six or seven shows. So they could be the, they could have been doing these shows for six or seven years compared to myself doing it for the first time. Um, so that was always something because there was going to be people that, even though you work hard, you don't know how hard they're working to. So you yeah. got to make sure that you work. Even harder, harder. Yeah. yeah. Um, I knew I had a good coach, but behind me as well. But then again, there's always other coaches, there's always other trainers, there's people with freak genetics. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, when you're, I guess, when you're dieting so hard and the mental side of it comes into it, I think you start to think about that stuff. Yeah. Even more than you did at a whole year away from the show. Yeah. That's probably the biggest one. 
Um, I think for me, it's disappointing people who support me. You know, disappointing my coach, disappointing my friends and family who came to watch me. And that can have either a positive or negative effect on performance. Um, but it was really disappointment in not living up to standards because you can train as hard as you can but on the day yeah. six minutes kind of decides on yeah. how that goes exactly. yeah yeah i think it's similar with bodybuilding too i'd like started a prep in october the year before the show was in august so it's like 10 months Oof. so imagine you do 10 months of work that's a baby Alex. exactly yeah <laughs> do 10 months of work and then similar to like a boxing thing like you mentioned six minutes i was on stage three times yeah by myself was only for 20 seconds at a time so it's like 10 months of work into like two minutes on stage yeah that's how like you really want to make those two minutes the best two minutes you can probably the best two minutes box. of exactly. your life <laughs> so yeah it's probably the same for you for the boxing yeah fight like training every week but then again like you mentioned six minutes that'll be the best six minutes yeah so as a personal trainer do you use the fear of failure to help motivate your clients to achieve their goals or Kind of show them any experiences that you've been through yeah i definitely use the fail of failure in fact i make it my goal to push every client i train with every session until they feel like they can't continue anymore um because personally i believe that the only way to grow is discomfort and fear is your body's response to discomfort so if you don't feel fear you're in your comfort zone yeah so they're really wasting their time seeing me yeah. if we're in our comfort zone yeah um, so I definitely use it all the time, but it's quite important to find that, that zone to bring them into. So it's nothing ever not achievable. It's something that they can push through. Yep. They'll feel like they're dying as I do mm -hmm. when you train me, yeah. but you know, they have it yep. and it's, it's the self belief. Exactly, um, yeah. and that fear of failure just becomes motivation and drive. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. I feel like when I train all my clients, you use those first couple of sessions to kind of get a gauge of where their level is at. So you know that the exercises you're giving them, the weight that you're giving them, is something that they can do. Yeah. As much as they feel like, like you mentioned, that they're going to die, you know that the weight you've given them, the exercise selection that you've given them, is always going to be something that they can do. It's not going to, I'm not going to stitch my client up, maybe. Yeah. Wow. You hack squat. <laughs> I'm not going to put a client on, say, if I've got someone that's not very mobile, I'm not going to put them on a heavy barbell back squat. Yeah. So I was building them up to something. So it's kind of taking away that fear of failure by ensuring them that what we're doing is going to help you achieve your goals, mm. but it's not going to put you at risk of injury. Because I think that's what you might notice as well with yeah. the clients. It's the risk of injury. They know that there's heavy weights going around if they drop it on themselves they feel like they're going to get injured. Yeah. So it's assuring them that what they're lifting is a manageable weight. Yeah. But then that you're also there to spot them. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest one too, is like, I'm right here. If the weight starts to drop, I'll help you lift it up. If not, then we'll stop. Yeah. So it's always a safe environment, but they can take risks. Yeah. Um, I have so much trust in my coach. I trust him with my life. Yeah. And some of the things that we do are very army based training mm -hmm. and you know, you can't help but question it because it just feels so uncomfortable and it's just fear after yep. fear. When we complete one task and he stands in front of us, I was thinking, oh no, you yep. know, what's next? But deep down, because I trust him, I know mm -hmm. it's safe and it's just getting through that, right, I yep. need to get out of my comfort zone. You exactly, know, this yeah. is the only way I'll become a better fighter. Yeah, I think it's the same with some of my clients too. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I try and make sure that they follow me on social media to see my workouts. Yeah. So they're seeing how I train. So you suffer too. Exactly. They, they, they know that I'm suffering, but an yeah. exercise that I put them through, they've seen me do it. So yeah. it's not like, I've never seen you do it. How do I know that this is going to be okay? Whereas it's like, yeah, you can, it's almost for them, they want to train almost like me sometimes. Yeah. Especially with some of the male clients that I, um, that, that I train with, they kind of want to do the similar exercises. If we're not training together, they want to do the same exercises so if i've showed them already that i can do it mm -hmm. it's like you can do it too it might be lower weight could even be heavier weight yeah but it's like it's a safe environment and it was there right next to you and being a coach modeling being vulnerable and modeling pushing yeah. limits is so important yeah exactly i think it's like showing that you can fail as well yeah so some of my sets that i'll put up on instagram or that kind of thing could be a failed set at a heavy squat or something 
but it's like showing them that when we train together if you fail that's fine we all fail yeah so it's not like I mean, it's not like you're gonna fail and then it's gonna leave you there yeah everyone does it so yeah and failing is not really that scary no. failing is where you find where your next goal needs to exactly, start exactly it's, it's almost like a learning and discovery for yep. yourself otherwise you're always stuck in the same exactly space. fail something take a couple of steps back yeah. remaster what that skill was then when you do it that next time you know you're gonna overcome that obstacle so um i know bodybuilding is a really highly masculine sport how do you kind of get over the fear of the field that you compete mm. in i think it would be different because it's it was my first show, so it's not something that I'd like generally do. I mean, guys are known for flexing their muscles kind of thing, but I wouldn't say that I'd normally do that unless well, it was like, unless yeah, it was, you know, seen you in the <laughs> but then it's like, um, on stage with 200 people out there to then kind of do things that I wouldn't normally do. Yeah. I wouldn't say I'd be easily stand in front of that many people to again, show off your muscles, but then it came down to, I've just done a whole years of work so it's like why not show it off and then friends and family in the crowd to support you mm -hmm. so it's like that was overcoming that fear because it's like there's at least 20 30 people out there that are here just to watch me so yeah. they don't really care about anyone else that was on stage obviously it's fun to watch but they were really there to just watch me on stage so leading up to the whole thing um it's very easy to like keep that in the back of your head yeah. You go on stage, hear them all scream your name, as you probably know from boxing too. Um, then it's a little bit easier to like go into it. Does it add to your pressure where you obviously know how much work and dedication goes into prepping, but from people who know nothing about bodybuilding, you know, you're just up yep. there yeah. looking pretty. Yes. Does I that add I, to your pressure? Um, I think the, almost the opposite. I feel like I got up there and I'd like again done 10 months of work it's like I went through that like I did I did it all didn't cheat on my meal plan at least, like not even once going up there knowing like people saw what you go through mm -hmm. or they kind of see that you're constantly eating the boring foods chicken rice as I still eat every day now but people are kind of like I don't know how you can do that but it's that sense of accomplishment once you're on stage yeah. that it's kind of like people saw what I do but then they don't really know why the, exactly why yeah. you do it and then they don't know how you're feeling on stage on that like final yeah. on that final stage how about yourself when it comes to awesome. boxing i think boxing comes with a lot of um you know people still think it, it's a really masculine sport and most fight cards with professional fighting it's mainly males with um the main card mm -hmm. so there's a lot of pressure because I feel like I have to prove myself not just of who I am, but mm -hmm. for all female boxers. Yep. Um, so there's definitely a pressure in it, you know, in training, I just have to do a little bit more, a little bit extra, just to show that females can just it's perform good. as well yep. as males. But I use that as a drive, um, you know, and having really good feedback from a really supportive team and a supportive coach yep. where they don't really let my gender hinder yep. it's more people outside of the sport where they'll look at me and they'll go yeah exactly. are, you, are you a boxer looking from the outside you don't in. look angry <laughs> yeah exactly looking on the outside and being like you're a female boxer rather than you're a boxer yeah just i'm a always a female exactly something. it's <laughs> instead of just being a boxer in general yeah. here's the sport it's always got to be female yeah, male kind of thing. yeah Thank you for checking out our video. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to impact more lives. And if you want to learn more about MacroActive and scaling your impact, make sure you hit our socials and our website in the description box below. If you want personalized advice, make sure you contact us and reach out.